Hi everyone. So this is in there here again to give you this week's update on privacy preserving machine learning. If you remember from last week, we were talking about anonymization. And in our previous video, we explained that why anonymization is never enough. In fact, we also presented you some examples to show that. And we presented how GDPR differentiates between anonymization and pseudonymization. We also presented you a framework uh, to measure how susceptible your data can be to de-anonymization. At the end, we also promised you that uh, in the coming weeks, we would present you some more techniques which are more potent at protecting privacy than anonymization. And this week, we are going to look at one such technique, which is synthetic data generation. So it's actually very simple. Let's look at an example for this. So this is a raw data, which has all the personally identifiable information, PIIs, PIIs as we call them. So the name, the address, the date of birth of the person. If you anonymize that data set, you remove all those PIIs, but keep the other information. And what uh, we had shown in our previous video that when there is some auxiliary data where uh, this information could be paired with, then you can actually de-identify uh, the anonymous data. But synthetic data set actually goes a step further. It not only removes th those PIIs, but it also generates other fields as if they were generated uh, from, uh, from the uh, original data set. So these entries look similar to the ones in the original data set, but are not the actual ones. And this is where uh, the privacy protection in synthetic data generation comes in. In fact, the idea of synthetic generation is, data generation is not very new. In fact, we at CEDAR a few years back did this demonstrator called DataGen, which generated synthetic data. So you could upload your data set to this demonstrator and it would uh, generate a synthetic data set for you. Or else you could specify relationships between different variables. And those relationships would then be used to generate a synthetic data. But what has happened over the years, and especially keeping privacy in view, these synthetic data generation methods have become more and more advanced. In fact, earlier synthetic data was viewed more of more as like a test data. So if you wanted to test your database, or you want to test your code, or you wanted to port your data set, and you, you needed a test data set for that, you use synthetic data. But now, in fact, synthetic data generation techniques have been paired up with machine learning methods. So they have become more advanced and they can learn more features about the underlying data. So then let's give some examples here. So synthetic data can learn about the relationships between different variables in your data set. It can also learn about the aggregated statistics in your data set and replicate those statistics, data in time distribution, condition distributions, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So as such, synthetic data has become more and more representative of the actual data set. But the added advantage is that the privacy is protected because all the information in that data set is synthetic and you cannot link that to a real person. So privacy is protected. And there are many techniques to do so. And one uh, very popular ecosystem to uh, generate synthetic data is synthetic data vault and this is a collection of python libraries which are open source which can be used for synthetic data generation and they're pretty advanced uh, the, the link uh, to this synthetic data vault is in the description below please uh, check it out uh, after the video this sdv has actually many advanced methods so they have gans like CD GANs. Remember last week we talked about GANs in the context of de-anonymizing data, but they can also be used to synthesize data, which can then be used to anonymize or maybe to protect the privacy of the data. Uh, but they also have the older methods of Gaussian Coppola, where you actually replicate a distribution and so on and so forth. And they have identified that there was a gap between new and old techniques, so they have come up with even new techniques which are like an amalgamation of the old and new. It's the best of both worlds. Not just that, they also highlight that uh, what the added advantages to synthetic data generation are. So 
many of you might have dealt with bias data, you know, class imbalance and other things. So you can use synthetic data to actually remove class imbalance in a data set and give you a more balanced data set. What you can also do that uh, just synthetic generation, data generation not only protects your data, but also enhances it. Many of you uh, who have trained machine vision models must know that uh, you apply data augmentation techniques like flipping the image or cropping the image, but synthetic data generation can actually give you like more advanced uh, data augmentation techniques. So this was all on synthetic data generation. But what I want to emphasize here is uh, during our uh, meetings with the companies, what we have discovered that once a company has used a data set, suppose it gets the data sets from its client or it creates its own data set. Once the company uses the data set, generates insights from the data set or you know, trains a machine learning model on it, the data set is of no use to the company. But many of these new startups, some of which are mentioned here, actually have em emphasized that you can monetize your data sets. You can actually sell those data sets without compromising the privacy. What you can do is using that data set, you can generate a new synthetic data set and you can sell that data set in turn. That way your privacy is also protected and there may be many other people who might find it useful and you make profits. Tonic is one such company. It pairs GANs with other techniques to generate synthetic data. AZ is a company based in the UK, which also specializes in, specializes in generating time series data. Similarly, other companies. So you have, uh, the links to these companies are also in the description below. You, you could check them out. So this was this week's uh, update on uh, PPML. Hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Over and out.